Good, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for, for joining us today. So we're really excited here in the city to roll out um, a, another group of our funding opportunities. This one will focus on our business community. We have two, two funding opportunities. One is the facade grant, and uh, the second is for business startups in the city. We'll have $500,000 in the facade pot and $1.2 million in the business startups. So we're, we're excited about this today. Um, take in all the information that our team has to offer. If you have any questions, please get back to us. And uh, we're looking forward to all of, you, all of you taking advantage of these programs. So Chris, Desi, take it away. Actually, Desi, I will give it one second. I think the mayor has joined us, I believe. Perfect. I did join you, but there we I go. have to stay if I'm not invited. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're always welcome, Mayor. Um, no, I just wanted to um, greet everyone and thank our team for all the hard work. Uh, it's our team and the, the answer team, of course, for all the hard work on this. We're excited that we're focusing on small businesses, both with the facade grant and the, the startup funding. This is the beginning of um, a, a couple, a few programs that we'll be doing for small businesses. Um, everyone on this call would know. How hard it is to be a small business owner. Uh, I know that very much um, from my own personal experience at our household. And I know that you're going through a lot and it's not stopped with COVID. It has gotten even harder with inflation and other things that you're battling. So we hope that this is helpful. Please you know, reach out. You could, you'll hear from the team. Uh, we have support for you to, to be successful and we'll be doing more for small business in the coming months with some other programs. So stay tuned. I'm Desi Navarro. I'm with the Answer Advisory team. As Eileen and the mayor noted, we are assisting the city in, in their um, setup and the implementation of their ARPA funding and program. We've also got Hector on the call as well, um, so he'll be uh, he'll be the the face that you see here today as well from our team. So uh, we'll jump right into it. We've got a little slide deck here just to give everybody an overview of the small business grant opportunities that are currently available, as well as an overview of some other grant opportunities that are coming in the future, just so everybody's kind of got a lay of the land. So uh, hopping right into the purpose. So really, it's to provide you all with a, an overview of the city's small business programs, the ones that are currently available. Uh, that is going to be the facade grant that will be run through um, one of one of the city's three partners here that we'll, we'll chat chat with here shortly and, and let you know who those are. And then it'll, there'll also be a startup or expansion program that's that's available. That'll go directly through the city's website through their grant application software. So we'll, we'll show you that as well. And then the second uh, you know, bullet here is to just, again, like I said, provide additional insight into what other grant programs are gonna be coming here soon. So as far as a, a quick ARPA overview, uh, as you may or may not know, you know, uh, total there was about 1.9 trillion uh, that was given out uh, as part of an economic stimulus bill, and 365 billion of that went to state and local governments. So, of that 365, the city of Scranton was allocated 68.7 million. And as part of their program, you know, there there are a lot of different ways uh, that ARPA allows you to to spend or allocate those funds. In particular, here and what the conversation is uh, for us today is going to really be around. Uh, the addressing of negative economic impacts, in particular, to those uh, impacts and, uh, that were had on small businesses, and even more specifically, small businesses located within qualified census tracts or in disproportionately impacted areas within the city. So an overall summary of how funds are being allocated for grant programs. So of the 68 uh, million or so, 14 million plus is being dedicated to grant programs for a variety of different reasons um, and different programs. You'll see a kind, of, kind of a breakdown here uh, into three big buckets. The first being public health and education. We've got, uh, the city's got a housing bucket. And then the last one is this economic recovery bucket. And you'll see under that economic recovery category, there are a few different um, options or a few different grant programs that are being structured or, or have been structured. Uh, the one today, again, is the facade grants and the business startup funding. But like the mayor mentioned and Eileen had mentioned, you know, there are other small business programs that are currently in development and will come out soon. One of them would be a wage subsidy grant program. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, that'll be another opportunity for, for small businesses here within the city of Scranton. So graphically, um, kind of showing how this all breaks down, you know, the city of Scranton, as defined by Treasury, is the recipient of all of the ARPA funding. 
And from there, uh, you know, the city can delegate to subrecipients to help administer uh, a portion of that funding or directly to beneficiaries uh, to, to benefit from some of that funding. So as of today, um, the city has ran first a, a nonprofit recovery grant that was issued through a subrecipient program through the Scranton Area Community Foundation. That grant, grant program is closed um, at this point. Um, but just so you guys know, you know that that's that's one of the other programs that was funded through these dollars. Similarly, um, the city just wrapped up a grant program for for wellness, um, and and really kind of the focus there was on behavioral health, you know, drug overdose prevention, violence prevention, mental health, overall wellness. Um, that'll be issued and, and was issued as a subrecipient program where the beneficiaries are going to be the community and residents that are going to benefit from those programs. So that application uh, period just closed as well. Uh, but today, the focus uh, is on these small business grants. But just so you know, there will be some child care grant opportunities coming in the future, some educational grant op opportunities coming, and some housing grants uh, coming in the future as well. So keep your eyes open for those um, as those roll out. So as far as definitions and some things to kind of keep in mind here, so, and not to be too complicated, but there are two, two programs opening at the same time, uh, and they're just both structured in a slightly different manner. So the first facade grant program is gonna be issued and ran through a subrecipient. Those subrecipients are gonna be uh, UNC or United Neighborhood Centers, NeighborWorks and Scranton Tomorrow. Whereas the startup and expansion funding uh, opportunities are going to be direct beneficiary grants uh, where the application process and the administration of that grant is going to go directly to and through the city of Scranton. So a subrecipient, quick definition, uh, what they're responsible for is, is they've got to determine eligibility uh, for those that are going to receive the, the federal assistance. Uh, they've got to measure performance based on meeting objectives of that federal program. They'd be responsible for programmatic decision making and, and ensuring federal dollars are used in the way that uh, is allowable and is outlined by Treasury. Um, and, and is and in converse to that, or conversely to that, beneficiaries, those are the individuals, organizations, or in this case, small businesses that are receiving those funds either through a subrecipient or directly from a recipient, which would be the city. Um, and, and directly benefiting from that financial assistance. So as a beneficiary, uh, you know, there's no need uh, for you all to, to determine any kind of eligibility or compliance that that responsibility really rests with the subrecipient uh, or the city of Scranton. So for both of these programs, facade and startup, all of these small businesses located in qualified census tracts or disproportionately impacted areas, you are the beneficiaries under both programs. Uh, so, so hopefully that kind of helps clear things up. Um, before I leave this slide as well, and we, we talk a little bit more about uh, UNC NeighborWorks and, and uh, Scranton Tomorrow, uh, when we say qualified census tract or disproportionately impacted areas, what you'll see is on both applications uh, for either the, the facade or the startup, you will see a map of the city of Scranton, and there will be a brown or like an orangish highlighted area uh, throughout the city. Those are areas that have been designated as disproportionately impacted or qualified census tracts based on the area median income uh, uh, of those areas. So there's a calculation that Treasury allows you to do that to define those areas. And so that calculation has been done. So to be eligible, your business has to be operating within that brown, orangish area within the city. So just keep that in, in mind as well. So subrecipients, um, a little more detail, right? So, so these are the eligible third party nonprofits, private or government organizations that are carrying out the use of ARPA funds on behalf of the city. And the key here is that they've got to ad adhere to all the two CFR 200 uh, monitoring compliance and reporting requirements throughout the life of the grant program. So um, each one of these three partners uh, understands that and then they'll help the city in, in making sure that, that everybody's compliant with uh, the way these funds are administered. Uh, but another note here is in terms of, of prioritization and, and really for eligibility for this program, you know, greater consideration is given to those projects and programs that serve those disproportionately impacted or economically dis disadvantaged areas. Uh, that is a mission of the city across all of these grants, but in particular, again, just to reiterate, to be eligible, your small business has to be operating within that disproportionately impacted or qualified census tract area.
So beneficiaries, that's all of these small businesses. So to be eligible, really, to, and not, not to harp on it, but very important, located within the qualified census tract or disproportionately impacted area, and then a small business operating with 50 or fewer employees within the city of Scranton. So um, pr pretty, pretty straightforward there. Just a little side note as well, before we review the you know, eligible grant requests um, that you can submit for each one of these programs, um, just a note that franchises are not eligible as small businesses um, for, for these programs. So uh, potential eligible uses would be things like costs associated with technical assistance or counseling that would be involved with a startup or an expansion. Um, any kind of cost for technical development. So we've given some examples there of, you know, websites, uh, technology, marketing, uh, costs for new lines of businesses or, or new build outs, you know, those things would be eligible. Um, things like cost for operations or mitigation for social distancing, cleaning barriers and other health and safety investment upgrades uh, that you may have done uh, as part of your small business or your startup to get it going, especially in a COVID environment, those things would be eligible as well. As far as a facade improvement, um, which again, that program will be run through the subrecipients, the three that we identified earlier. The eligible uses of funds would be things for the repair, maintenance, or restoration of brick, stone, masonry, architectural metals, doors, windows, sidewalks, storefronts, um, exterior painting, awnings, uh, exterior signage and lighting, and various other improvements if deemed acceptable by the design committee. So that's one thing too to note, um, all of the requests that go through uh, for the facade improvement program. They will, they will be reviewed by the subrecipients, but they will also be reviewed by the city's design committee uh, to make sure that what's being submitted there is in line with the design committee requirements. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about how to apply. And this is where I'm gonna turn it over to Chris to share his screen. But uh, first we'll walk through the how to apply for the startup and expansion grants. That'll be through the city's neighborly software as the direct beneficiary grants to the small businesses. And then after we wrap that up, we'll go through uh, how to apply for the facade grant uh, improvements through one of the three subrecipients. So, uh, folks, this is the, the neighborly portal. Uh, this is what is going to be used for the small business startup and the expansion grants. Some of you may be familiar with this. Uh, some of you may not. But this is where the city is running a number of different projects. So neighborly is a, a great software. It allows us to track projects. Uh, communicate with you, uh, submit documents, the whole nine yards. So this is uh, incredibly helpful for us organizationally to keep things uh, in line and uh, push applications through the funnel. When you first log in, there's a sign-in window. Many of you are probably going to have to register as a new business. So it asks for an email and you know confirm that you've spelled your email correctly, first name, last name, and password and re-enter your password. It is going to send you a verification email if it's your first time logging into this system. Uh, so make sure you look for that. That might end up in a secondary inbox or it might end up in your junk or your spam folder. Check and make sure that you locate that neighborly email so that you can verify your account and continue with the application process. So once you log in, this is going to be the screen that you see. It's going to be a nice, hearty welcome. Uh, and as I said, the city's using this for a couple of different projects. One is the HUD Homebuyer Project, and the other is the ARPA program. Obviously, we're here today to talk about the ARPA program. And I'm actually going to walk you through pretty much step-by-step -step what this uh, looks like. So we're going to start an application, and we're just going to call it Small Business Test. For some reason, there's a, a window here that asks you to click to continue. It's a little cumbersome, but we're going to move through it anyway. And on this first section here, to Desi's point from earlier, uh, you folks as small business owners are going to be applying for beneficiary awards for small business startup expansion and also for the facade program that we'll touch on in a little bit. So uh, when you select direct beneficiary grant, there's a second pop-up window that populates and you're going to go right to the bottom here and choose business startup and expansion grant. Again, we talked about the qualified census tract quite a bit. We want to make sure that you're located in that qualified census tract. And the city is looking at other data to make sure that we're encompassing all areas that are disproportionately impacted. So that map may grow, uh, but we have not confirmed all the data yet. But right now, the map that's available on the Scranton ARPA website at scrantonpa.gov slash ARPA, that is the map that you should refer to that will help uh, let you know whether or not you're located in the qualified census tract. So I'm going to complete this section and continue. If you try to uh, move through a section without uh, saving and continuing, it will give you a little pop-up flag and ask you if you want to proceed. Uh, we're going to save this as we go today. 
first section of the application, contact information, the name of your business, if you have a doing business as, your CEO, your federal tax ID number, physical address, really common information. If uh, you are applying on behalf of a business and you're not a business owner, my suggestion uh, over the last couple of grant cycles has been to put your information here so that if we do need additional information from the person who submitted the grant application on behalf of a business owner, we know that there's a secondary contact person that we should be getting in touch with. So section B is your organizational information, the date you were founded. Uh, there is a weird little hiccup in Neighborly that if you were founded before 1900, it tried to, uh, it tried to make everybody founded in 2018. We had an, an organization that was founded in 1894 for the last cycle, and uh, it tried to force them to be founded in uh, 2018. So we had to get this little field added in here. Uh, if you, I don't believe, and Desi, you might be able to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't believe that the tax exemption status would apply for this grant cycle, correct? Correct. Yeah. These, these would be small businesses. So, so that you guys could just skip that. Excellent. Uh, the geographic areas that you serve, your organization mission statement and primary purpose. Are you in uh, good standing with the city with taxes and trash fees? Uh, that's an important question. We want to make sure that uh, organizations that are applying are caught up with all those items. Are any of you, the organization staff or board members immediate family members of city staff or elected officials? The number of part-time and full-time employees that you have? And the services that the organization provides to Scranton City residents. A lot of you folks are, are going to, you know, some of you may be restaurants, some of you may be private counseling services or whatever the case might be. That's where you can tell us a little bit more about your organization. Uh, the populations that you serve. This is an important question for you to mark non-applicable. Uh, B12, does the organization count persons served or households served? That was something more for our nonprofit community partners. Uh, same goes for question B13. So we're going to move ahead to section C for the grant request. And again, we're talking with this neighborly application about the startup and the expansion grants. So this is the total of one and a quarter million dollars that was allocated by city council for startup and expansion of local businesses. Uh, that's going to be 5% of your total startup costs, anywhere between a, a total award of $6,000 and $10,000. Uh, we started at $6,000 because there is an existing microgrant program in the city that allows your business to request up to $5,000. I know that I believe some of our OECD partners, uh, Trish may be on the call. I know I, I let her into the meeting earlier, uh, but that's a great program, but we didn't want the ARPA grants to compete with the existing city programs. So that's why the total awards start at $6,000 for this program. Uh, Desi, I don't believe, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, are, does this program require sam.gov ID numbers for beneficiaries? It does not. You okay. guys can put an NA or leave that one blank. Leave that one blank. And that's a good news because there's a lot of organizations across the country applying for sam.gov ID numbers, and uh, it's taken a little bit of time. So that's one thing that you folks don't have to worry about as small business owners. Uh, in question C3, you are going to be applying for the small business startup or expansion funds. And again, Desi, I'm going to rely on you here. Do we need a secondary check mark for the beneficiary award? We do not. Everybody should just be selecting the small business startup or expansion funds. Correct. All right. So one checkbox for C3. C4 is where you can tell us about uh, why you're applying for the grant. This is your grant narrative. Uh, explain to us uh, where your need comes from, where your expansions are going to take place, and how your business is going to be able to continue to serve the city in uh, an expanded way with this grant funding. So question D is really important. Again, because all the small businesses are gonna be beneficiary grants, you're gonna select yes. And that's a conditional logic question. So it opens up all of these additional questions here. Uh, this is an important note. The applicant agrees that it will uh, be able to have all funds contracted or obligated by September 30, 2024 and expended by September 30th, 2026. Those are important dates for the city as well because we do have spending deadlines that have been set by the federal government to make sure that this, uh, this grant funding does get into the community and make a, a near immediate impact. For question D2, this is a little bit more information about your grant narrative. How has COVID shown you ways that you've needed to expand your business, uh, whether it's to stay competitive or true to address a new business line? Uh, maybe you weren't doing online ordering and you need to update your website. That can be an expansion cost that uh, this grant can help with. 
For D3, uh, this is any additional equipment purchase or facility upgrades that you're applying for. Maybe there's a neighboring business that closed to you and you're trying to expand into that space. Uh, that's some of the information that you can provide here. D4 and D5 do not relate to this grant application. So you can mark both of these questions as NA or non-applicable. Uh, if your organization receives the funds requested, what's the anticipated future social or economic impact to the community and the residents you serve? So how is this going to serve the area where your business operates? You know, obviously where the city has prioritized the qualified census track areas. We know that those areas have been impacted uh, both during and before the pandemic probably. So let us know what you believe the impact to expanding your business is going to do for your community. And D7 is another non-applicable question. This is sort of a universal application. So there are questions that apply to both the business community and the nonprofit community. So you can also put NA in question D7. Uh, section E, no one on this call is going to be applying for a subrecipient award, uh, with the exception of the three partners who've already done so. Uh, so you can click no and move on to the alternate funding section. So in question F1, has the organization received other COVID-19 funding assistance, Federal CARES Act, Paycheck Protection Program, Economic Injury Disaster Loans, or CDBG coronavirus funds? This is important because uh, the city needs to make sure that there's not what's called a duplication of benefits. Uh, there are rules that have been set by the Treasury Department that we cannot fund the same project twice. Uh, very important so that uh, these dollars impact as many areas of the community as possible, but also so that they're spent correctly. So we want to make sure that we're aware of any uh, potentially conflicting funds that you've received in the past. Question F2, are there other grants that the organization has currently applied for or intends to apply for? Again, need to make sure that we are not duplicating benefits through the ARPA program. Does the organization currently employ or have access to a grant writer? Simple yes or no question. And has the organization previously managed or utilized federal grant money or support in the past? Again, really simple to answer. Section G is financial information. So these are questions about uh, revenue for the past year, uh, projected revenue for the current fiscal, and projected expenses for the current fiscal year. Uh, what dates are covered uh, by your organization's fiscal year? Are you, are you a January one? Are you a July one? Are you an October one? That's important for us to know. And describe how the organization typically raises funds. Your businesses, we, we know pretty much how you raise funds, but uh, important distinction to make nevertheless. Uh, insurance information, general liability, automobile, and workers' compensation. And then we can move on to the required document section, which we often get a lot of questions about. So as far as required documents uh, and suggested documents go, the first one that would be applicable to everybody on this call would be the uh, detailed itemized budget uh, for beneficiary awards. And there is a link here to a PDF uh, that will allow you to submit a sample budget for your expansion or startup projects. Uh, my suggestion to everybody on these calls has been, if you do open that PDF up, save it to your machine and open it with a PDF reader, uh, Adobe Acrobat or Acrobat DC. Uh, and then there's usually a toolbar that appears on the right-hand side and you can click fill and sign and the form becomes kind of interactive and you can actually type into that form if you're not going to print it out, fill it out and uh, scan it back in as part of your application. Uh, copies of your IRS W-9 forms, copies of your tax returns for the three most recent years. And Desi, I, I just want to... Going to seek your expertise here again. So for the startup and expansion programs, these are businesses that have either started or will expand after March 3rd of 2021 per our guidelines, correct? Uh, correct, right. So you know, those are, those will be the only eligible costs or costs associated with the startup or expansion after that, that date. Okay. Um, and so the purpose for the tax forms is you know, and depending on how new your business is, right? So if, if the business is here recent or startup that's currently being planned for and you haven't paid any taxes, that's okay. Um, but if, you, if you've if you been started up, you know, in 2021 or you went through a startup in 2021 and you have a tax form, just want to make sure you're current on taxes and, and gone through that process. So. Uh, I don't believe this is applicable to anybody on the call, but we'll touch on it since my mouse is here anyway. Copy of IRS letter or certificate verifying tax exempt. Again, probably not applicable to anyone on this call. Uh, again, Board of Directors, not applicable to this call. Articles of incorporation, list of monetary and or in-kind donations from the city of Scranton, if that's applicable. Uh, again, uh, realizing that some of the startup businesses that are going to be on this call are probably not going to have two years of audited financial statements. 
submit as much information as possible. Uh, we want to make sure that we do our due diligence to provide assistance where the greatest need exists. So this kind of financial information is really important to the city in the review process. Uh, copies of invoices showing increase in administrative or program costs for the last two fiscal years. Um, Desi, I'm going to tag you in here. Past due mortgage and rent and past utility bills. Is that applicable? No. Nope. So, so those are all for the uh, the other grant opportunities or the previous grant opportunity that is already closed. So uh, the ones that are marked as required up there above are, are really the only ones that uh, that are needed here. And then uh, it won't let me submit because we have not completed the application process. But once you are able, once you fill out all the required fields, you should be able to complete and continue. It's important to note that you can save your application at any time. So uh, if you want to get started this weekend, I know you're all business owners, you're all busy, you know, staffing and, and ordering and dealing with supply chain issues that are happening across the country. Maybe you want to get started today and just get your contact information in there and then save your uh, application and come back to it. I think that's that's a perfectly fine place to start. Um, these are also our first, first come first served grant opportunities. So we do wanna encourage you, if you're in need of this funding, we want you to get started, but we also want you to finish so that we can review them as quickly as possible. I think that's a really important distinction to make uh, between any of the other grant programs uh, that we've done so far. To date, the grants that we've rolled out have gone through an application process and nothing has been reviewed until the application process has closed. This is going to be different. This is more of a first time, uh, first come, first served, excuse me. So we are going to be distributing this to our partners uh, that are on the call. Again, uh, important to note that we can't do really good things like this alone. Uh, so for the facade grant program, there are going to be contact organizations for each of you based on where your business is located. So if you are in uh, West Scranton or North Scranton, you are gonna be working initially through NeighborWorks. If you are in the Hill section or downtown, you're gonna uh, work through Scranton tomorrow. And if you're in Southside, Pinebrook and Manuka, you're gonna work through United Neighborhood Centers. We wanna thank those partners for being a part of this. Uh, we got to spend some time with them at our announcement on Tuesday. We think it's gonna be tremendously advantageous to the businesses to have someone in your area that knows your area particularly well uh, to be able to review these grants on behalf of the city for us. So the facade grants, again, real quick, uh, is a $500,000 total allocation across the city. Uh, again, want to make sure we make an impact as far as we can, which is why those partner organizations are so important. The grants themselves are going to be for up to $10,000 each with a 25% match from the business. Uh, from what we've heard, that's a historically low investment that's going to be required by the uh, by the business owners. We've, we've heard even 50% or 100% matches that have been required in the past. We're hoping that low entry point really helps make an impact uh, for you as small business owners. Uh, the other piece to note there is for the shared storefronts, you can apply for up to $20,000 of grants. So let's say uh, you are a small business owner and uh, you have a partner business that kind of shares the same area with you. You can apply for up to $20,000 in grants with that same 25% low match. Uh, this application was also designed to be able to be printed out and filled out by hand, scanned back in, or there are fields in here that you can type in. Uh, so actually, you'll see the the typing fields in just a minute, but this is how it looks as a printed document. I know I'm probably really small on your screen right now. And it's probably not very helpful at all, but uh, I did test it to make sure that it looks good and there's no giant boxes for text uh, over the fields themselves. So I'm just gonna scroll down. This is my contact information. If you have questions about this process, feel free to reach out to me at any time. This is my direct email for the city. This is a direct phone line. Uh, I'm available off hours. Weekend hours, uh, again, I know that as small business owners, you're going to be busy during, uh, I'm sure, when the city's normally operating. So I want to make sure that I'm accessible to you folks for any questions that you might have. Important note here, your application must be submitted by September 20th, 2023 to be considered for funding. So this is almost a whole year that this application process is going to be open. And again, typable fields uh, for you to be able to fill this out digitally. Uh, in an, an Adobe Reader program, and then save it to your machine and send us back that completed copy. So we're trying to make this as easy as possible uh, for these questions that are yes or no questions, easy checkbox uh, answers. And I want to touch on this real quick. So we'll go back through uh, applicant's name, applicant's address, the business name if, if applicable, and the property address, mailing address if it's different from the uh, property address, 
phone number and email. An important note, if you're not the, the building owner, but you, you would like to apply for this, it's important for us to know that. If you're not, we're gonna ask you to fill out these four fields here for the property owner name, address, phone, and email. And if you are, you're gonna skip right down to the third page and give us a full project description. Again, this is designed to, to take all the text that you can fit into it, uh, but also when you print it out, uh, these lines come through kind of nice and clean. So I'm a graphic designer in my previous job, so I tried to make sure this was nice and easy for everybody on the call. Um, once you give us your project description, there is a, ser a section here that uh, asks you to attach some information to your application. We're looking for businesses to obtain three bids from licensed contractors, uh, in addition to that, manufacturer cut sheets, paint color samples. Uh, the licensed contractor piece is important because there is, the city does have to follow uh, certain procurement processes for uh, you know purchasing and things like that. We're asking uh, partners to follow a lot of those same uh, procedures so that everything follows the way that the city normally operates business. Uh, again, for an attachment here, proof of payment of due taxes and current photos of the exterior of the building. An estimated total cost of the project and then your signature digitally, of course, if you're filling it out here uh, and the property owner's signature, if necessary. There's a little section here for our design committees, uh, which will get involved in the process and uh, you don't have to worry about those as applicants. There is an entire breakdown of the grant program overview. Uh, so one, as applicants, we wanna make sure that you guys go through that. I'm not gonna bore you and uh, read the whole thing to you verbatim. But it is, uh, it is important to make sure that you are uh, qualified, uh, that you're current on your you know, state, county, school district, local taxes. There's a lot of really important information for you to review here. I know Desi and I have both touched on this quite a bit, the City of Scranton Revitalization Project Footprint. That is the QCT map that we continue to refer to. And this is an embed of the current QCT map. Again, I, I mentioned before, uh, we do believe that there are other impacted areas of the city uh, but we want to do our due diligence and gather data from reliable sources to see if there are ways for us to expand the reach of this map area. Uh, the terms of the grant award, which I just touched upon, $10,000 with a 25% match for joint applications and award up to $20,000 with the same 25% match. Grants are made on a cost reimbursement basis following the process of application design review and approval. Uh, all work must be completed within three months uh, from the notice to proceed. Otherwise, the grant will be forfeited. We want to make sure that uh, you get these projects started and that we get this money out into the community, a really important piece. And all rehabilitation work financed in connection with this program must conform to the requirements of uh, the city's codes and regulations. So there is a link uh, clickable within this document for the Office of Code Enforcement. Uh, we encourage you to connect with them if you have questions. And then in addition, we know that particularly in the downtown, there's gonna be some historic structures that may be uh, willing to apply for this. Uh, some of you are probably already familiar with the city's uh, historic architecture review board. Uh, it's important to note that for those historic buildings, we are going to conform to the Department of Interior's standards for rehabilita rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. Excuse me there. Uh, again, a lot of really important information. I don't want to bore everyone on the call because I want to make sure we leave time for questions and answers. Uh, but there is a breakdown of eligible and ineligible activities here. Again, this goes back to the funding guidelines that we discussed uh, earlier. And another important piece, the evaluation rubric. So uh, occupancy status, the location, are you located within the QCT? Uh, are you located in a, a historical building or a, an area of architectural significance? The impact that you intend to have on your community and your commitment to the city of Scranton by either residing in or operating a business in the project area for more than five years. So those are all going to be part of the eligibility and review process as the city is concerned. Um, again, a, a really thorough breakdown of the application procedures uh, and then this is actually where you will start. So this is your intent to participate in the facade grant program. Um, upon review as a designer, I probably could have put this up a little bit higher. Uh, this may change location by the time we roll out on Monday. So it's a lot of the same information that we asked you for above. If you are the property owner, uh, if you're not, we want you to fill out this information. And then this would be similar to the project uh, guidelines and outlines that you laid out above. So that is the application that's going to be available through our partners. 
want to again recognize the help that we're receiving on this project from NeighborWorks, Scranton Tomorrow, and United Neighborhood Centers. Uh, I think this is a really important uh, community partnership that we're all participating in. And I'm personally excited to see what folks come up with and how to uh, you know, update, the, update or expand uh, the exterior of their businesses. So with that, I will stop sharing and I'm gonna turn things back over to Desi. Startup and expansion grants, they go directly to the city. You will be a beneficiary for that. There's a link here on the slide deck. The slide deck will also be posted online. You can find it if you have a pen or a pencil or, or you just wanna kind of type it out um, as we're, we're talking on the call here, but scrantonpa.gov slash ARPA slash will take you right to their ARPA website. And that's where you'll find the links to all of these programs. If, if you want, once this website or once this, uh, I'm sorry, webinar is posted, and you have access to the slide deck, you can just click directly on this link here. It'll take you to that neighborly software that Chris showed you, and you can go through the registration and start your application that way. Similarly, for the subrecipient facade improvement program, you can find it in the same place, scrantonpa.gov slash ARPA. Um, and then based on where you're located or your small business is located, those hyperlinks there on the, uh, the slide deck will take you right to each one of those organizations where then you can uh, access their applications as of Monday at noon. Um, real quick, going back to the neighborly, just to make sure um, just to make sure we're all on the same page here with one of the attachments. It's a very important attachment uh, that's part of your, your application here. Um, as a beneficiary, you guys will be required to fill out Exhibit 2. So on that list of required documents, Exhibit 1, you can ignore. Exhibit 2 is where you will take and you will fill out, to the best of your ability, what your estimated costs are for your startup or your expansion project. So with that, we've given a couple of different budget categories, a couple of different potential description prompts. You'll see that there's kind of a general bucket here for that technical counseling involved or any of those technical development components. But if the startup does have a, you know, a capital expenditure or equipment cost or anything like that associated with it, you can, you know, find it, find a, a budget category that's uh, in that same vein and just give us a description and then give us, you know, that amount and then give us a subtotal here. Another thing to note, you know, for these programs, we know, especially for those, you know, startups that might have a capital expenditure associated with it, we know, you know, the market and market conditions continue to, to kind of be a little bit upside down here with just ongoing, you know, impacts from the pandemic that we're still still feeling and seeing now, right? So um, putting in a contingency of 10%, I think is, is something that we would recommend doing. Um, that way, when, it, when funds are allocated, what we, what we would hate to have happen is, you know, startup or expansion funds get allocated, the market ends up doing something funny, and there's not enough money to, to finish the project and, and ARPA funds have been allocated elsewhere. And so now there's just kind of a, an unfinished you know, project, you know, that's, that's definitely not what we, we'd like to see happen. So throw, throw a, you know, a contingency in there if you feel like it's needed. If it's, if it's not a capital project or something like that, then, you know, kind of use your discretion in terms of, of filling that piece out. And then the other thing to note, um, the other exhibit that will be required, and this will only be required if you mark yes to question F1. And that was that question, if you recall, that Chris had spent some time talking to us about a duplication of benefit. Um, it is an exercise that we need to go through with the city, again, to make sure per, per Treasury's you know, rules for, for this program here that you know, any kind of project uh, or, or startup or expansion costs here that may have been funded uh, by another grant program or another you know, alternate funding method aren't being uh, duplicated here with this request. So it's a very simple form. Uh, and I know it might be a little bit small here, uh, but basically all you need to do is just uh, determine or, or let us know what the total amount of the project or the startup or the expansion is here in this upper right hand corner. Uh, you don't need to do anything with this middle column here. And then below is just kind of a prompt of some potential means of funding sources, uh, maybe, you know, insurance proceeds, contributions, donations, what, you know, whatever you may have gathered. But then there's a, a lot of blanks here for other funding sources. So if you've got another grant opportunities, uh, maybe a county, maybe a Lackawanna County COVID grant or something like that, uh, you can just list it out here, list the amount that's been received at this point. And then it's just a, a math problem that that needs to be done of just adding up all of the amounts received from funding sources versus the total amount needed. And then we're going to just determine, is there still a need that exists? 
or has the need been met by alternate funding sources? And depending on that, we'll, we'll let us know if there's a potential duplication of benefit or not. So um, these are the forms you'll fill out with that startup or expansion project. Again, if you have identified alternate funding that you've already received. Um, and then just a recap of the timeline. So uh, the startup and expansion that'll open um, and be open until September 20th, really a year from now. And then same thing for the facade improvement uh, grants as well. Um, through those through those respective you know website uh, of the city partners here, and that's that's it. So we're at the end of the the presentation. I'll, I'll stop sharing, and we can open up for questions and and comments. Desi, I got one an email that I'd like to just address really quickly. Uh, so the the question that I got was, if your business started prior to two uh, to 2021, are you eligible for the expansion grant? Yeah, so your business very well could have started before 2021. You would be eligible for an expansion grant, but just keep in mind that any costs associated with the expansion can only have been incurred after March 3rd, 2021. So if you're looking to do an expansion now, haven't started, but you want to put a budget together, absolutely. Maybe you did an expansion earlier this year. Those costs would also be eligible, uh, but just no cost prior to March 3rd, 2021. And that's a, that's a treasury rule. That's not a, not a city rule. We have a couple questions that have popped through, Desi. I'll, I'll start with the top here. Uh, looking to expand into a catering business, into an empty storefront attached to my business. Does the previous grants need to be listed? So any grants, yeah, that's a great question. So, and that sounds like a great use here, right? So, especially if you're located in one of those areas within the city. Um, yet the answer to that question is if you have received grants specific to that expansion, uh, where you've, you know, put in maybe a county grant, a state grant, you know, any any kind of alternate funding, yes, you, you've got to disclose that, let us know what that is, uh, and just use that spreadsheet, uh, Exhibit 3, to fill that out. And then another one here, Desi, uh, having opened a business in June, uh, would I be eligible? Yes, June of this year, absolutely. And, and again, as far as a, uh, you know, an expansion project, the, the small business could have been started in 2018, you know, before that, 20, 2015, whatever. But in terms of expansion costs, um, really the, those, those costs and, and that plan uh, has to be after March 3rd, 2021. And I do want to touch on something again real quick that we talked about earlier. So the city does have other grant programs available. Uh, the micro grant program for small businesses is available for funding of up to $5,000. There's also a loan to grant program that encourages job creation uh, for uh, any uh, amounts. Uh, I think it's for... I could be wrong. And I, if Tiffany's on the call, I'm going to ask her to correct me if I am. But I believe it requires the equivalent of a, a full-time job for every $35,000 that, uh, that are borrowed. And if you meet the ongoing guidelines that are tied to that, the city forgives the loan. So that's not only a loan, uh, pro, loan and grant program that helps you expand your business. It helps with job creation in the city. Uh, and in addition, uh, there are grants that we have not announced yet. Let's say that, for example, you expanded right before March of 2021. Maybe, maybe you're, you've expanded March 2nd of 2021, and you're, you're right on the other side of that deadline. The city is going to be announcing additional ARPA small business grants, uh, hopefully sometime this fall, uh, that include uh, small business support and uh, something uh, that the mayor is very interested in, which is a, a wage supplement program as well. Uh, I have a question here. I'm looking to open my business. Can I apply? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, businesses and startups, please, please do. And then are there details on the design committee review process and design requirements for the facade grant? How does owner occupancy affect eligibility? Uh, those are two great questions. Yeah, so Chris, maybe I'll, I'll maybe put the design committee review um, on your end, but as far as the owner occupancy and affecting eligibility, um, it really doesn't affect eligibility. Um, but what I think it does affect is, you know, if you are leasing uh, a business or, or a storefront that is located in UCT uh, that is owned by, you know, a landlord or somebody else other than yourself, I uh, just want to make sure uh, that that they are also aware of any improvements or anything like that that is happening to their building. And uh, and that's really it. As far as eligibility, um, it doesn't it doesn't make you ineligible if you're in a lease space versus an own space. As far as the design committee review process and details, I was going to give that to you, Chris, but I think in that in that grant application, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a little bit of information about uh, what the design committee may be looking at in terms of evaluation. 
Yeah, there is a full breakdown. Uh, so uh, the question there was from Brendan Regan. Brendan, if you would be kind enough, if you want to drop your email in the chat, I can email you that section uh, so that you can review uh, that applica those application procedures. Is it possible you can qualify for both? Yes. Like the facade grant? Yes. Okay. And the grants, um, yeah. Okay. My situation, I'm already working with uh, NeighborWorks to, for the facade. Um, the biggest uh, issue I saw or am experiencing is actually securing a contractor, like from the get-go. Um, so that is a concern of mine because it seems like they're just so busy right now. But beyond that, I actually have the little commercial space in which I'd like to open my shop. And I had plans to do that in 2020 when, you know, we all know what happened and couldn't get anybody to come out to even give an estimate. So I have everything ready to go, totes full of inventory. What I didn't have done was the interior of the space because I was going to renovate just a little bit. And my the few estimates I did get in 2020 have more than doubled now. Like I was getting initially, I was told between five and seven thousand dollars, and just today, I got an estimate from eleven to thirteen thousand dollars for the interior, and I only have so much <laughs> to work with. Right, right. So, and I'm, that's so I'm just, you know, can I? Is there any way to tap in to for that? Like if I if there's a shortfall or no? Uh, as, as far as shortfalls, um, you know, at, at this point, you know, the city is as. And again, it's in an effort to try and serve as many folks as as they can. Um, but I think you know, take advantage, and you you can put together a budget for if they're telling you it's thirteen thousand dollars or fifteen or whatever it is for this interior fit out that you're looking to do to expand into this other space. You can, you can put that in together in your budget, um, and and ultimately these funds can go for you know go forth to kind of help towards that. Um, but any kind of shortfall there, you know, maybe there are some other, you know, programs or alternate funding that might help you bridge that gap, whether that's, you know, through the city or, or, or other sources. But in terms of kind of expanding a top set, I'm not sure if that's something that um, is currently kind of, and maybe Chris can speak to this better, but I don't think that's that's currently something that, that uh, has been discussed. So Desi, I kind of want to tie into that. This is uh, Erica Yurkovic, and I am the ARPA project manager for the city of Scranton. So any questions relating to this, as well as um, the business startup, you could reach out to Chris and myself. Um, but I wanted to tie into that because I did hear that there's been issues obtaining even estimates for projects. It says three estimates needed. However, if you can only obtain two, just call and let us know. We could work with you because we have been hearing mm -hmm. there's been issues with that. So if you can only get two, that's OK. Try and get three, though, if you can't. If you cannot, just let us know. And that's okay, that's what I, I wanted want... to say because it says three in the, the guidelines. But if you can only get two, just let us know. OK, but I just want to make sure now because this would be for like the actual physical inside of the because I'm going to be putting, it's not like a lot of work, but it, nonetheless, it is, you know, I don't know what you would call it. Like, um, it's not even a renovation. It's just um, putting, like, I wanted that, uh, I wanted to raise the ceiling for the purpose of a chandelier. So I have to put in a new drop ceiling, like that kind of stuff. But it's, it's like actual construction. So I don't, I want to make sure that this startup grant, is it, is like, is it worth applying for it? Would they help with those kind of costs or no? Yes. Yes. So this would be yes. a, like okay. an expansion. Yep. And it could be cap, like a capital improvement, could be equipment, yes. uh, it could be both. It could be uh, technology upgrades. Any of those things would be eligible. Uh, does we have one more in the chat right now that we haven't answered yet? So I operate two businesses out of the same building. I'd like to update the front of the building and the sidewalks. I think uh, that would be eligible for the 20,000 along with the 25% match. I'm in Pinebrook and I own the building. That's a great question. Um, you know what? Let us go back and let's let's chat through that one because I think you know initially when we were thinking of, of pooling um, funds together to to you know fix a storefront that may have different you know businesses operating in it, I think the vision was different business owners. But um, this is a great question. Let us you know converse on that internally and then we'll put that in the FAQ. Yep. And I just want to expand on that for a minute. So, uh, Mr. Morgan, the uh, I believe Pinebrook is one of the areas that we're looking to expand that impact map to. Uh, you know, obviously, we're we're keenly aware of some of the uh, economically impacted areas of the city. Uh, and to, I think to a, 
a couple of folks surprised the, the Pinebrook area was not included in what's called that qualified census track. So that's one of the areas that I, I am familiar that we're looking at expanding data, gathering data to make sure not only that we do impact the areas that uh, are affected in the city of Scranton, but we don't want to operate on a gut feeling because there are really specific and strict rules uh, that we want to make sure that we follow in terms of the application of these grants. But a great question. And again, it would, would encourage folks to, to start their application, contact the uh, businesses responsible for uh, the area where you do business and begin those conversations so that we can, we can start getting these grants out in the community. Great, thank you, Chris. So Pinebrook is not in that map section. I didn't get a look at the map. I couldn't see it on the, on the video. Yeah, and it's it's a little hard. It's it's a very detailed map. Uh, and the, we're trying to get a, a little bit of a cleaner read from our, our folks in city planning so that it's also easier for you folks to understand. There is an interactive version. Uh, Tim, if you want to message me directly, uh, I can send, actually, what I'll do uh, when we put out our, our final updates for the city's website on Monday, uh, we also have links to an interactive map of the qualified census tract. Uh, so uh, our my colleague uh, Craig in city planning has done a great job of actually mapping it digitally. So you can zoom in down to the block level and, and see whether or not your business is in the QCT. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, much of Pinebrook is not in at the moment, but we have been working with a local research firm to gather additional economic data to see if there's an opportunity for the city to potentially uh, expand into those areas that we know are impacted kind of, uh, based on our interactions with business owners and homeowners. Uh, but that maybe, maybe the data is outdated. Uh, I think the, the ARPA map uh, is relying on 2010 census data so that we are, we are working, uh, to expand those areas. Yeah. And we're also, you know, very involved with the Pinebrook revitalization there. So you, you would think that would kind of automatically be in there, but, uh, yeah, we'll wait to hear from you. I appreciate all your time. Very good. Uh, I have another question here in the chat. Is downtown Scranton on the map? Downtown Scranton is on the map. And to my knowledge, all, most if not all of downtown Scranton is in the qualified census track. Uh, so that is an area that we know we're going to be able to make an impact. Uh, but again, in a conscious effort to make sure that this funding source reached all areas of the city, we wanted to make sure that we kind of had an equal allocation of funds uh, with partner organizations that had uh, targeted impact in different areas of the city. Uh, you know, the downtown's important, I think, to the city as well, but we also know that the neighborhoods are really important. So we wanted to make sure that we did initiate those additional uh, partnerships with NeighborWorks, UNC, and Scranton tomorrow to make sure everybody kind of got access to a piece of the pie. And Leslie has just jumped into the chat uh, with Liz. Uh, so if you're in the downtown and you're interested, there's your, there's your email addresses for Scranton tomorrow. Uh, again, I know our, our friends from NeighborWorks on the call. Uh, and if you're in West Side and North Scranton, you're already familiar with them. If you're in the South Side area, you're familiar with UNC. Uh, we're going to work to make this as simple as a, a grant rollout as possible. It's a complicated process, but we don't want it to be too complicated because we want to make sure everybody has access to these opportunities. Chris, I just want to say one more thing. Um, just make sure this is a business facade. Um, I did receive an email earlier asking somebody that if they could do it in their home. This is for business facades only. Great question. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that there will be another homeowner and home rehabilitation piece of the ARPA grants that roll out. They're not ready just yet, but that is another piece that the city council has allocated for. Uh, we want to make sure that folks are able to either own a new home in Scranton or improve the home that they've had for many years here. So that is another piece of the ARPA program, but that is not for this grant rollout that's going to happen on Monday. And I see Miranda uh, from NeighborWorks has dropped a couple of email addresses into the chat as well for the folks there. So thank you for that. Well, folks, that's been an hour and I want to be respective of everybody's time. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to conclude the webinar at this point, but again, uh, Please access the city's uh, ARPA website at scrantonpa.gov slash ARPA. Uh, reach out to Erica or I directly for any questions that you may have about this grant process. And if you do intend to apply, we wish everybody the best of luck.